then we're going to show you a little bit more stuff in RX, and then we can do a, a question answer, and then we'll finish with a special preview. ではですね、後半の方、えー、RX の、えー、サラウンド対応になりましたので、そのサラウンドの部分ですとか、えー、その他 RX の機能いくつか見てご覧いただきまして、えー、その後 Q&A を行います。えー、その先に、えー、先ほどお話ししましたスペシャルプレビューの方も、えー、やらせていただきたいと思っています。OK、So、um, we now find ourselves in Pro Tools. And the reason we're here is because we have a surround file that has a bit of a problem that appears on every single channel. はい、これプロツールズ画面上でサラウンドミックスをしている状態の画面ですね。サラウンドファイルなんですが、それぞれのトラックに同じようなノイズの問題が乗っかってしまっているというシチュエーションになります。So just in case people、uh, didn't know, RX7 now supports multi-channel、um, audio editing, so you can bring in you know 5.1 all the way up to 7.1.2, which is the Dolby Atmos standard. RX7 の方ですが、最大 7.1.2 ドルビーアトモンスのフォーマットにまで対応をいたしましたので、こういった素材の方も扱うことができるようになりました。Great. So,、um, I'm in Pro Tools now. I'm going to take、uh, all this audio out of Pro Tools and into the RX environment. And to do that,、um, I'm going to use an audio suite function called RX Connect. ではこちらのプロトルズ上ではですねバドラバラのトラックにいる状態の素材の方を RX コネクトを使って RX に送っていきます。So the first thing you have to do is just select all the audio <笑> and then I'm going to go to audio suite noise reduction and I have to zoom out there we go RX7 connect はいでまあステップとしてはですねまずオーディオファイルの方を全部選択状態にしていただきましてオーディオスイートのノイルズリダクションから RX7 の RX コネクトを選んでください RX6 にしちゃうと六の方に送ってしまいます。So I will just press that and now we get the RX、um, Connect dialog window and it's asking us do we want to send something for reference or for repair. By default, repair is selected, and that's what I want to do. I want to do a round trip. I want to get audio out of Pro Tools into RX, fix things, and then send them back round trip style into Pro Tools. RX Connect の画面にはリファレンスかリペアかというところがですね選択できるんですが、今回はリペアをしたいのでリペアを選びまして、こちらで RX7 に送り、RX7 で処理したものをプロツールに戻すという作業になります。So I will press send. And because we're sharing screens, oh, there we go. It's opening up just fine. So now it's going to take all of those channels, bring them into the RX environment, and there it is. So here is that entire surround mix now in RX. So I mentioned before, we can go up to 7.1.2. This is what it looks like, and this is brand new to RX7. これが 7.1.2 の RX7 からの新しいビューになっておりまして、7.1.2 のチャンネルの方が全部一つの画面の方でご覧いただきます。So、ファイルを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、それを作っているときに、マルチチャンネルファイル素材を読み込んだ場合も同じようにこちらのようにですね、LCR とか LFB とかそういったところはですね、素材の方にエンコードされている通りに開くことができます。So if we want to have a listen to what's happening on different channels, all we have to do is go over and you know, zoom in here and just press and we can solo you know, that channel. まず左の方の、これは L チャンネルの方ですね、押しますとソロ状態になります。Sure, if they can see that, but ah, thank you. So let's just solo this channel here. So there's left and right. Obviously, we're not set up to output in surround, so what RX is doing is using a stereo fold down feature so that we can hear all the channels that folded down to surround. 
今回あの、RX の方ですね、ステレオフォールダウンの形で、この2本のステレオのスピーカーの方から再生をしています。So here's all the channels. So we have、um, a great way to see what's happening in a bird's eye kind of view on every single channel. And this is really helpful if you have a problem that you can hear across all the channels. えー、こちらのビューだけではなくてですね、えー、全ての、えー、トラックを1本にまとめたようなビューで見ることができるんですがこっちその1本にまとめたビューで見ますと、えー、チャンネル全体にまたがって、えー、起こってしまっているようなノイズなどの問題を、えー、解決するときに非常に便利になります。So I can hear,、um, it's kind of like a, a smack, it's something that happens when the players You know, take a bit of a rest and then they start again with a new note. And I can hear it appearing in most of the channels. I think the source of it is the cellos. Instead of going channel by channel by channel by channel by channel to repair it, I can collapse everything into one view, make that repair, and then uncollapse them. And then we'll see that that repair will you know, cut across every channel. これを弾き始めの際に、えー、どうも演奏家の方が何か物音ノイズを立ててしまっているようなので、えー、それが、えー、全チャンネルにまたがって、えー、聞こえるのでそれを修正したいと思います。So to fold everything down so we can see everything in one view, we go to the top left here, zoom in to this section, and what this is going to do is just like it says, sum all the channels into one perspective. 左上の方に今あの指のマークがついているとこですね。ちっちゃい矢印のようなマークがあるんですけども、あれを押しますと、えー、まあ名前の通り3部ですね。あの全部合計して見えるようなイメージで。えー、so there, there it is. So now it looks like we're playing one file, but really it's just collapsed everything into one view so that we can see everything at once. これであの先ほどのですね、何本にもわたってたマルチチャンネルのファイルが一本のファイルのように見えている状態です。And we can still do our solo function when we're in this perspective. So I can still, for example, see and hear just the left channel by clicking it. 今もあのこの状態画面の状態でも、えー、左端のボタンを押していただくと、例えば C を押せば C だけのソロにしたい、ソロの方はこのビューでも有効になります。So let's zoom in, and I'm hearing a particular problem right over here. Zoom in, see, ここに問題があるというふうに思います。Zoom in, see, ここに問題があるというふうに思います。Did you guys hear that click? Click が上がったのが聞こえますか So that's appearing across all the channels, and the old way. Would be to go channel by channel by channel and fix that. But thanks to this sum view, I can make moves in this one screen, and you'll see when I make the repair, it'll make that repair across all channels. So, To fix this problem, I'm going to use one of the most popular modules in RX called Spectral Repair. So I'm going to make a selection. And I'm going to use the attenuate tab. We have attenuate, replace, pattern. I'd say 90% of the time people are using the attenuate function, which is just to make quieter the problem, the spoiled audio that you're selecting with your selection tool. えー、スペクトラルリピアの方はアテニュエートリプレイス、えー、パターン、えー、それから、えー、パーティカルというですね、えー、パーティアですね、えー、という、えーまあ、4つのタブがあるんですけども多くの方はあのアテニュエートをこの場合、えー、使うんじゃないかと思います。So I'll just select that, press render. はい、選択してレンダーを押すだけで非常に簡単な処理ですね。Let's see how that sounds. サンドルー Here's before. 
And after. So I can't tell if it actually got rid of it because I'm sitting here. Did it get rid of it? <laughs> So, just to show you, um, you know, we made this repair, and then when I uncollapse everything, we'll see that repair across every single channel. This is what makes this, uh, you know, this multi-channel workflow so special. So press this. So we see that repair across every single channel. Yeah. So the same applies in post production. So Let's say we didn't want to, let's say we're using a, a musical example. Let me just open it here. So here is a surround file. It's a 5.1 mix, and you can see that it's one wave file here. I'm going to right click, open it with RX7, and like I said before, RX will respect the channel structure, and everything will open on the channels they're supposed to in this video. So if you listen carefully, there's something that's happening across every single channel. Um, let me highlight it for you by going into the sum view and using some special tools in RX to identify it. So I'll collapse it again by going over here, clicking that. I'm going to use my time and frequency selection tool to show you what's happening across every channel here. And I do that just by going down here. You see we have a paintbrush, magic wand. These are just different tools that you can use to highlight and you know select carve out audio problems that you're seeing in the spectrum. So I made a selection here, and if I want to play only what I've selected, only what's inside of my selection, I can do that by going to the play frequency selection tool, which is down here. So we have crickets that are appearing across every single channel. I guess you can imagine maybe cicadas appearing across every single channel if this was recorded in Japan. <laughs> so I'm going to increase my selection. We're going to go right back to spectral repair. And I'm going to keep things very simple and just use the default settings here. Strength at one, you know, surround region, uh, surrounding region uh, length at 100. Everything just, just so you know, um, a lot of people usually push our tools a little bit too far. Um, a joke that we have at Isotope is the best preset in RX is the default setting. So. Trust the default. Setting.
、えー、今回非常にシンプルにリピアス,スペクトルリペア開きましてですねアンティニエイトが選ばれているんですが、えー、特にパラメータは一切変えませんでハイドトープの社内なんかでもですねちょっとジョークとして言うんですけれどもあのベストなあの RX のプレゼントはデフォルトだっていうジョークがありましてそのデフォルトの設定というのは非常にいつも正しい結果を出し導いてくることが多いのでデフォルトのまま動かさずにやってみるとですね、えー、ぜひちょっと実践してみていただけたらと思います。Okay, so I'll press render. And it's going to run through. You notice it takes a little bit of time, and that's because, again, it's not going through just one file, it's going through every single channel to remove the crickets with the spectral repair module. リピアの、えー、作業はちょっと時間かかっているように見えるんですけども、思い出してください、これはマルチトラックの、えー、素材ですので、1トラックずつに対してです、ねえー、処理をしないといけないので、少し時間はかかります。Cool. So, Let's do a before and after here. Yeah, before and after, Steve. It's why me, right? Why is it why me? No, no, you see my fun guy? It's a second guy. Fun. I mean, it's a nice guy as well, too. Dude. Yeah, it's a total freeze. So we've managed to remove the crickets from all the channels without interfering with the integrity of the dialogue, the music, the background. We can get rid of things very, very transparently with RX. Okay, now, the background noise and えー、それから、えー、こちらもは、えー、新しいモジュールになるんですが、ダイアログでリバーブという、えー、成分より搭載されたモジュールのご紹介になります。OK。So、um,、Dialog e Reverb does what you think it's going to do. It's going to get rid of reverb in Dialog.、Um, and it replaces our all purpose reverb, which、um, experienced users of RX might know about. It's right over here. えー、まずダイアログデリバーブですが、えー、名前の通りダイアログのためのデリバーブということなんですがもともとお使いの方はご存知の通りデリバーブはですね前からありましてねこういうのが、えー、あると思います。So just like we did、um, with Music Rebalance, I just want to point out that the technology behind the brand new Dialog D Reverb is informed by machine learning. So again, we fed a neural network examples of Reverb and Clean dialogue, and that's how it's able to identify the two and separate them. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. 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 Okay, so just to acquaint you with the audio example, I'm going to play it here. And as you can hear, there's a lot of early reflections. Someone's in a very kind of spacious room. He made us enough bullets to blast their asses into the stratosphere. He made us enough bullets to blast their asses into the stratosphere. So let's call up Dialog e Reverb. I'll zoom in so everyone can see. So we have a few parameters here. Reduction is going to control how much we want to reduce the reverb once we have identified it with the sensitivity meter. So higher values with the sensitivity meter will separate more reverb from the dialog. And we can push that reverb down that's identified with the reduction slider. Reduction slider is the reduction of the reduction. The sensitivity is the same as the reverb. And this is a really special parameter. So, ambience preservation means that if you have a piece of dialogue that has an important、um, background noise, something that's important for the context of the scene, let's say it's a television show or a movie, and you want to retain. That、uh, background noise, but remove the dialogue,、uh, sorry, remove the reverb. To do that, to retain the ambience, you just increase 
the ambience preservation slider to 100%, and this will ensure that the background steady state noise will remain, and the reverb of the dialogue will be attenuated. えー、でその下にもう一個、えー、アンビエンスプレザベーションという,、えーというえー、パラメータがございますが、今これ100にしたんですが、えー、これをです、ね、上げることによって、えー、アンビエンスの方は、えー、非常に大事な、えー、シーン、例えばシーンを表すとにです、ね、アンビエンスまで、えー、完全に消えてしまうとまずいよねというようなシーンで、でもリバーブはここまでかかっていると、えー、聞き取りづらいとか、えー、いうときにですね、えー、アンビエンスをどのぐらい残すのか、えー、一番右に振ると、えー、いっぱい残るということですね。えー、今ゼロに戻してきてですね。So I'm just going to keep things really simple here. I'm going to go all the way down with the reduction, increase the sensitivity, just to make the example the before and after very dramatic.、Um, I don't have an important noise floor or background noise that I want to preserve, so I'll leave ambient preservation all the way down zero. でちょっと今回は派手めにかけてみたいと思います。アンビエンスの方ももうゼロにします。And I'll press render. レンダーをします。So, here's before. もたもた。これがダイアルフィデイリバーブで、まあ、あのアリリフレクションなんかがかなりクリアになくなっている感じもです、ね、今までのデリバーブのスタンとちょっと違ってきているなというのが、えー、感じられています。I'm going to show you one more example here、um, before we do maybe some question and answers.、Uh, and it's dialogue contour. And it's,、uh, I think, an invaluable tool for people working in post production. では、えー、Q&A のセッションに入る前に、えー、もう一つ、えー、ダイアログコントラという新機能の方をご覧いただきます。こちらは、えー、ポストプロダクションの、えー、ユーザーの方には非常に便利な機能ではないかと思います。Stuff I hear the crowd saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write-up. So, as you can hear in this example, we have a presenter who goes up in pitch at the end of his words. So he goes, you know, reacting to, the write up. So that can be a little bit annoying. <laughs> so we can use a tool like Dialogue Contour to naturalize the speech and make him sound a little bit more confident in what he's saying.、Mm. こちらのダイアログではですね、あのちょっと言葉の語尾を上げながら喋るような感じですよね。えー、まあちょっと日本語だとこんな感じみたいなちょっと喋り方が上がってて、まあ多少うざく聞こえるよねということでですね、そこを直してみようということで。So I'll just play it so you can hear how he goes up at the end of his sentences. Stuff I hear the crowd saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write-up. So introducing dialogue contour. So, to get audio into Dialogue Contour to start manipulating it, all we have to do is highlight the audio in the spectrogram and it will populate in the Dialogue Contour、uh, window. So, this is Dialogue Contour. What it allows you to do is reshape the intonation of dialogue. So, let's say You are working with an actor and they delivered a line incorrectly or it didn't have the right feeling. You don't have the money to go and record it again and do ADR. You can recover the performance with this tool. でですね、こちらのツールでできることというのは、ダイアログのイントネーションとかトーンをですね、再調整するということができるので、ね、まあ、これはシチュエーションとして取ってしまっている素材があって、それをアフレコし直したりとか、取り直したりする時間とか予算がないようなシチュエーションでですね、こちらの機能が効果を発揮するんではないでしょうか。So the way it works is you simply just sort of reach in and touch this line here, which will make, if you want, the dialogue or the sound go up. Six semitones or down six semitones like this. Workflow is 非常に簡単でして、クリックをしますと、あのこの線の上でクリックをしますと、ポイントが自動で入りまして、でそこを持ち上げると上は上下六セミトーンまで上げ下げができるようになっています。So we can make a pretty just for example, you can make a pretty dramatic dip like this,、um, 
but you can also smooth the curve with the curve smoothing parameter. And we can also preview、um, the processing in real time before committing with render just to make sure that our settings are what we want them to be. So here's before. How it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. And here's after. How it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. That's a bit dramatic, but just to show you what you can do,、um, let's do something that's a little bit. Uh, more human sounding. I'm going to change the intonation of one of his lines here. I'm going to call it out for you. It's right when he says、um, reacting to. So he goes reacting to. I want to change it to reacting to. Go down instead of up. How it's saying or like reacting to. So, right there, reacting to. So, all we have to do is draw a point here, and a point here, and maybe one here, and make a small dip there. Let's see how that sounds. How it's saying or like reacting to. So, I want to include that. So, here's before. How it's saying or like reacting to. So, I want. And here's after. How it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. So, very small transparent tweaks. It's not going to change、uh, the entire feeling or sentiment of a dialogue. It's just for those little lines where the actor didn't perform them in the way that you wanted them to. ほんの少しでちょっといじっただけなんですが非常にナチュラルな感じで声が変わっていて何ていうんですかねよくあるピッチシフトみたいなのを声にかけてしまいますともう人間の喋ってる声じゃないようなあの機械みたいな声になってしまったりしがちなんですがこちらかなり動かしてはいるんですね実際のエッで言うとただ動いてはいるんですがその人の声のまま下に降りているように聞こえるのが特徴的なところなのかなと思います。ちょっともうちょっといろいろ変えていきます。How it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. And before, how it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. How it's saying or like reacting to, so I want to include that in the write up. So you can get pretty technical with it and just reshape、uh, performance. This is the actor's voice. This is the actor's voice. Cool. So, um, Before we wrap up with a special preview of something we're actually really excited to show you,、um, I want to open up the floor to any questions that you guys might have, comments, or anything like that. Please don't be shy. I might not have an answer, but hopefully I do. But just ask away. Okay, now this is Q&A So, I think with that's a great question. So,、um, in RX6, we introduce support for multi threading. So, if you have a computer that has more than you know, two cores, four cores, eight cores, we can actually take advantage of those cores、um, to just speed up processing, speed up the you know,、um, kind of horsepower of RX. So, if you have a computer with more than four cores, You can enable multi threading in the settings here.、Um, but I would say if you're running RX, I'd say more important than anything is probably, let me think here. It's difficult because I have a pretty spec'd out computer, and most post production professionals or music professionals are usually using a computer that's pretty, pretty competent and powerful.、Um, 
honestly, I don't think either one matters too much since most of the processing takes place offline in the Rx editor. However, if you're introducing Rx you know, plugins, real-time plugins in your computer, I'd say the most important thing would be RAM. But if you're just doing standalone work in the audio editor, a basic computer with the basic specs, I think, will, will do just great. え、まあ、多分今時のパソコンを使っていらっしゃると思うので、まあ、普通は問題はないとは思うんですが、え、プロツールなどですね、あの、リアルタイムのあの、AX So these are basically, uh, so when you open up Dialog Isolate, you get you know, uh, actually more parameters in 7 than you did 6, so I'll go through all of them. So this is basically you know, how loud you want the dialog to be, and this is how loud you want the game to be. So after processing, obviously. So if you want the um, dialog to be very you know, loud, you would leave it at 0, and you would bring the noise gain all the way down or you do the inverse if you wanted to just, you know, bring up the noise, vice versa. So they're just game sliders, a little bit like music So this is a special parameter. So separation um, sensitivity is a little bit like music rebalance as well. So just like it says here, higher values, the more I push it, it'll separate uh, less noise from the dialogue. This means that we will get more intelligibility after separation, but we might get a little bit of bleed from the noise floor bleeding in. But if we go the other way, it more strictly defines what it categorizes as dialogue or speech, which means that we'll get a pretty clean dialogue track at the risk of some artifacts because it's very narrowly and strictly defining what is dialogue. So we encourage people to, you know, go between and see if there's a sweet spot for that. え、こちらのセパレーションセンシティビティ、これもさっきのミュージックリバランスと同じような感覚ですね。あの横のスライダーがミュージックリバランスになってますが、
、えー、同じで、えー、右に行けば行くほどあのいわゆるちょっとはっきりと聞き取れるようには取れるんですが、まあ、ノイズなんかも混じってしまいがちになりますでこれを左にグッと寄せると今度は、えー、声だけに絞っていく形になっていくんですが、えーまあ、ちょっとやっぱり声の質感は人工的になってしまう雰囲気が出てしまったりとか、えー、する可能性がございますので、えーまあ、ちょっとここはやっぱりスイッチスポットを処理しながら探していっていただくという使い方がいいのではないかと思います And ambience preservation is the same thing that I showed in dialogue、um, de reverb, where if there's an important noise floor, an important background noise,、um, that is separate from the other noise with the noise gain that you want to take down, you want to preserve it, you would increase the value all the way to 100 or maybe somewhere else. But if you are not worried about preserving the noise floor, you bring it all the way down to zero. こちらもあのダイレクトデリバーブにあったのと同じ全く同じ作用をするパラメーターでしてでアンビエンスの量ですねアンビエンスの量もう完全になくしたいのか、えー、アンビエンス自体は大切だから置いておきたいのかというところでここを調整していただくということです And the separation algorithms are again borrowed、uh, from the music rebalance、um, so these different、um, algorithms offer different intensities and、uh, I guess ballistic to processing Advanced joint channel will usually get you、um, the best sounding result, but it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to preview,、uh, you will not get a very good,、um, quick, speedy preview with advanced joint channel. You'd want to use something like channel independent or joint, which is a little less CPU intensive.、Um, so if you're just rendering, you're not worried about previewing, I'd say always go with advanced joint channel. であのセパレーションアルコールズについてはミュージックのリバランスの時にやったのと同じことなんですがあの、まあ、ざっくりした用途としてはこの2つですねチャンネルインディペンデントのこのインドチャンネルは、まあ、プレビューの時に使ってえレンダーかける時はアドバンスを使ってますよということですその方がやっぱり、えー、結果がいいことが多いということです Any other question? はいありがとうございます、えー、じゃあよし、はいはいうございます。It's kind of like a shotgun blast, whereas with spectral repair, it's like when you pull up the sniper rifle, you can get very specific and just you know, kind of remove things. Much more labor intensive, time intensive, but usually it pays off in the end. <laughs> えーまあ、こうなってきますと、えー、スペクトラルリペアのデマというふうになりますでスペクトラルリペアの先ほどご覧いただいたように選択肢をもっと使っていただきます、あ、先ほどご覧いただいた方はです、ね、もうちょっと細かく使うようなです、ね、選択肢をいろんなものを使って、えー、もう本当に、えー、手術をするようにと細かくやっていけば、えー、そのある程度きれいにはどうやってできるかエラスルとか、えー、ウィンドウの中ではそ、まあのふうに広げた十分なものなんですけどもショットガンみたいなものバーンと置いて。細かく狙いをつけたときに、よくざっくりとは当たるんですが、えー、スペクトラリティアの方は、スナイパーとかのですね、狙いをつけて、ここだけを決めて、重力みたいなイメージですと、実はこれ、細かく、こういう感じですね、細かく選択をして、そちらを細かく、ドンってスペクトラルティアつけると、そのダイアログ自体を、あ、そうですね、引いちゃいますから、はいまあ、そういうときは、まあ、かなり細かくていくしかない。Yeah, you could go harmonic by harmonic, like using something like the magic wand tool,、um, like that. 
to you know make very fine selections. <coughs> it, you can even uh, one trick is to go to the the menu, go to adaptively sparse, and that gives you a finer resolution, so you can zoom in. Uh, let's see here. And just go between the harmonics like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can get really fine with the detail. So, the man <laughs> so, um, it's 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 tricky. Um, let's see here. I, I have to admit, I seldom use the magic wand tool. I usually use. Uh, I'll usually go and use a tool like this. But if you want, you can. Let's see here. Yeah. So. If you have, uh, if you make a, a selection with the magic wand tool, let's say you want to select the harmonic, and it, you've gone too far or something, you notice how, I'm not sure if I can do this while zooming in, if you zoom in and you hold option, you get the minus sign, like that. Yeah, so, I'm going to zoom in, oh gosh, there we go. Um, you can see here. I can use another selection tool, like hopefully I won't lose it. There we go. To, you know. Does that answer my question? アルゴリズムとか複数アルゴリズム違うの進めたと大体どういったパターンが有効なのかという指示いただけるかですか? Well, they're not actually algorithms. They're more um, functions. So attenuate will uh, so we'll just go one by one. So attenuate is going to take a look at what you selected as the audio that needs to be, you know, that is spoiled, and it will look for a healthy signal around in these uh, wings here, these brackets, and will make quieter the spoiled audio by replacing what's in there with the good audio. <laughs> Replace is going to basically replace uh, what you have selected as spoiled with what's inside or what's outside in your selections here. It's kind of like a very intelligent copy and paste. So, pattern is the same kind of workflow where, let's say you have maybe someone drumming, like, and then there's a break, there's a dropout in the audio. You can use that tool, you would basically hover over the part of the audio that's been dropped out, and it will do its best to replace um, the pattern and use a bit of math to take a guess of what used to be there and resynthesize. Uh, the dropped out audio with what's around it. And partials and noise is kind of like a, a, an advanced version of replace. 
マーシャルズノイズは、えー、先ほどのリプレイズの、えー、さらにちょっと進化版のような See how with partials and noise we have an extra parameter, harmonic sensitivity. So it's just a more advanced version of replace.、Uh, to be honest with you, most people use to spend all their time in attenuate. These are very effective、um, tabs and workflows here, but most of the time, the kind of you know, the nature of the work that people are doing in RX usually calls for the attenuate tab. 多くの場合、多くの、えー、RX ユーザーはスペクトラルリビアを使えるときは大体まずアテニュエイトを使うということですね。でその方は少し、まあ、なんというかトリッキーというか、あのそういう処理になります。はい、どうも皆さん、こんばんは。<笑><笑>いや、なんか急に出てきてこれなんですけど、まあ。とりあえずちょっと今回通訳してくださった日本オフィスのアジトと日本オフィスの田村由紀さんに大きな拍手をください。自己紹介忘れてましたか。そうです。みんなみんな誰だこの人。<笑>まあ僕は僕の名前中間翔太と言います。で皆僕のこと翔太と呼ぶんですけど、まあボストンに住んでいてボストンというのはまあアイゾトップ本社が隣の町のまあ私ですね。アイゾトップ本社のケンブリッジでございます。でそれで僕の会社サウンドトレックっていう会社でまあ。コンサート業、コンサートプロデュースとか、音楽制作だとかを、まあ、やっています。その、まあ、会社の業務で一貫としてコンサルティングをやってまして、でそれでアイストップの方にあとは、まあ、まあ、外部、まあ、出向とかでコンサル業務をやってます。で、それが大体5月くらいなんですけど、だから、まあ、ちょっとアイストップのはちゃめちゃツイッターみたいなのが増えた時期がありましたよ。まあ、動画がいきなりバンバン出てきたりとか。ツイートが散々出てきたりとかした時が僕が入った時期なんですでちょっと日本のコンテンツがあまりにも少なすぎるあまりにも少なすぎるし日本でこんだけ、まあ、人気があるのにまあこれほどなんかサポートされたのおかしいだろうということをガンガン言って、まあ、そしたらまあどんどん増えていったなのでアイドルとかこれから日本にすごい優しい会社になるのでちょっとそこら辺はよろしくお願いしますぜひぜひで質問とかあればいくらでも聞いてくださったらまあ、ツイッターの利用とか基本的にユイさんが全部返答するのでなので、まあ、お悩みのことがあればさっきみたいな質問があればぜひ聞いてください。What he said. <笑><笑>あ、あうだじゃあありがとうございましたどうも。一緒に簡単しながら楽しみましょう。